College football week eight recap. Brought to you by winningcureseverything.com. You can check out everything you need to over there. That's our site. That's what we do. It's also brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Let's see if I can remember all six sports books down there. You ready? Come on. Gold Strike, Horseshoe, Fitz, uh, Samstown, Hollywood, First Jackpot. Bam. Bam. Nailed it. You can find everything you need to about those sports books over at tunicatravel.com. Like I said, the premier spot in the southeast. Let's go on and jump into this thing. Recap note number one. All right. Purdue. Man. Boiler up, baby. 49 to 20. Now, if you just look at the box score, if you just look at total yardage, all that kind of mess, Ohio State actually outgained them 546 to 539. But if you look at the yards per play, Purdue had almost eight yards per play. Ohio State had like five and a half. A star was born in this game. Now, which one? You talking about uh, uh, Moore, or are you talking about DJ Knox, or I'm talking about uh, Tyler, uh, number four, number four, uh, Rondell Moore. Moore, yeah, that, Rondell Moore is a different beast. That he kid fits is crazy special. He fits Jeff Brom's offense like a friggin' See, glove. I don't even. I don't. Even, I think that guy could succeed in any offense. I watched him oh, lower his shoulder, too. and I watched him take a safety that was easily twice the size of him, and I saw him blow over him, spin around him. The safety completely wrapped him up, and he just lowered his shoulder, ripped through it, spun out of it. Safety's on the ground. He's trotting off for a touchdown. Nobody's catching him. Now, here's the thing. Like, that like, doesn't happen in college football. That happens in the NFL because he's a, he's even, a true freshman, Even the, the big guys aren't as big. Or even the little guys are still have some size to them. The fact that you can, in college, take somebody twice your size and, and run just over embarrass him like that, that as, doesn't happen. As an 18-year-old. Yeah. I he's mean, this 18 guy, this years guy, old. He's this true guy freshman. legitimately is a kid. Now, he, he, if you have watched Purdue this year, you obviously know about him. He was big against Northwestern. He, he's had huge plays all year. Uh, the fact that they already had three losses kind of got him out of the national spotlight. Well, but last yeah, night – And they like hadn't that, played that a team helped. like this on national TV. Agree. I mean, that's the Agreed. biggest thing. Like, that Northwestern game was on national TV. It was a Thursday night game. It was like the opening weekend of college football, right? Yeah. Yep. So, I, you know, that probably got a lot of eyes. But I don't know if people were like – they weren't ready for college football yet. Weren't ready to yeah. find a star – but right now, he he helped himself last night. Doing it against Ohio State. Yep, that's a big. Thing. Saturday night was a uh, was a big deal. Rushing yardage. Ohio State had seventy six total rushing yards. That's three point zero yards per rush. Purdue had one hundred sixty one. They rushed for five point six yards per carry. That's a big difference. Well, and, and then, I so mean, you talked about the box, you talked about box score. How they had more yards than them. How many of those yards came in garbage time? Because it was late, middle well, of the it, third quarter. Dwayne Ohio Haskins, State had six points. Dwayne Haskins Two threw field the goals. ball like seventy times. Yep. The, the the problem is 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 so many of those points and yards that Ohio State got, they came in garbage time. Yeah, they I mean, this did. was a butt whipping from start to finish. At no yeah. point in time was Purdue ever not in control of this game. Uh, Bill Conley from SB Nation. You know, he does win probability after the game Correct. or post-game win probability. Uh, yeah, Purdue wins this game 99% of the time. Like, it wasn't even close. There was nothing fluky about this. They destroyed these guys. Uh, let's jump into the next one. Wazoo. Man. Washington so State. So good for, for Leach. 34-20. to 20. Game day was awesome. Did you watch college game day? I did. All right. So, game day was fantastic. Humongous crowd. It was a gigantic party. Drew Bledsoe, I thought, was a pretty good uh, pick for, for guest picker. Um, Gardner Minshew is a superstar. He absolutely made the right decision. He, here's what his goal was, right? He was going to go to Alabama and sit on the bench behind Tua and, and Jalen and maybe get some garbage time here and there. I mean, he's a he was a grad student. So his graduate transfer from East Carolina, his plan was to go into – and, and be a grad assistant, like, as a coach afterwards. And he figured, if I'm going to do that, may as well go do it under Saban, right? Okay. Here's the thing, though. He came up in air raid systems. So if you get a chance to go play for Mike Leach and actually start, and you can learn to coach underneath him, absolutely. And this was the perfect spot for him. Perfect spot. He can throw the ball. 39 out of 51, 323 yards, four touchdowns. 
Look, Washington State. Brandon, Mississippi kid. Believe that. Believe that. So, Oregon had 58 yards rushing for the game. 2.4 yards that per defense carry. defense just shut them down. Wazoo's defense is for real. Uh, look, Tracy Clay's, like, Minnesota had a good coach with him. And, obviously, there were things that went on outside of the realm of just football that uh, that cost him his job. But, you know, I think he landed at a good spot. Uh Man, Washington State is the Pac-12's only playoff hope. Well, this is one of the things that you and I texted a little bit about yesterday. How funny it is that we we all kind of agree, right? We all understand that the Pac-12 had this little conspiracy to, to to help USC in that in that game against Washington State because they thought, well, USC is our bell cow. We need them to be whatever. They overturned something that you just don't overturn in college football, which is targeting, which, which was, was a blatant, a, a pretty, blatant targeting pretty, pretty, call. pretty rough, violent targeting call. And Washington State loses that game. How fitting is it that Washington State could legitimately run the table, get left out of the playoffs, strictly because the Pac-12 officials thought it's better to have USC win this game than Washington State. So yeah. now they miss out on large sums of money. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's karma. Other it fits. other thought on this is uh, going back to the quarterback. There, this is a class A reason why I don't understand. My brain doesn't comprehend. I'm the number one quarterback in the country. I'm gonna go play behind at a school. I'm gonna ride the bench at a school where they already have a number one quarterback in the country. Like, go play. Well, Minshew was never okay. a number one quarterback. Like he, but but he you understand the con- East Carolina. But I do you, see uh, where but you understand the, the the thing. Go play somewhere, and and guess what? You can make your own way, and you can make your own name. You don't have to go to a school where everything's already built up. If you're the guy that's the one that builds it, they build statues to you. They sing yeah. songs about you for the rest of eternity. Well, it's so in some cases, like with Tua at Alabama. It ends up playing itself out because as good as Jalen Hurts is, but but it Tua was that much better. It doesn't same thing with Trevor Lawrence. But it doesn't make any sense though, Gary. It's still in my mind. And this is this is not Alabama hate. It's still in my mind the wrong decision. You're he's a true freshman. He just took them to a national championship game undefeated. Why would I choose to go play behind him? Why would I think? Well, if I get there, maybe I can beat him out. Why wouldn't I just go somewhere where I can start year one? I don't even have to redshirt. I just start year one. I play. I will. I will tell you this. What's the purpose of that? Recruits like competition. Like it, a lot of them prefer to be tested oh. by the best. See, but see now your what your answer there just just contradicted the thing that everyone says because you can go to Alabama and win championships. Well, you can't say it's about competition, but yet I want to go somewhere where everybody around me is a five star and we're all going to play on Sundays. Because that says, I don't care about competition. I want to play where it's easy. I want to play where I can get a ring. Yeah, but it it's never guaranteed that you're going to play on Sundays. Like, that's, I think, that's going, right. going that's somewhere right. like Hang Alabama, on. LSU, you're, Georgia, you're, you're exact, wherever. You're exactly right. It's not guaranteed, which is why it's important to play as much as you can on Saturdays. That's why you don't sit behind somebody else. You go somewhere where you want. Well, where you also you can go play. somewhere that you can be developed, right? How did we get into this conversation? Oh, we're talking about Gardner Minshew. Okay, Gardner yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, I'm I'm with you. Like with him, he wants to go and be developed as a coach. Other guys want to go and be developed as players. Okay, so if you're be- going because Alabama has this great history of putting in, in Georgia too, because because Georgia's had number one recruit after number one recruit after number one recruit come through there, they have this great history of putting quarterbacks in the NFL. That, yeah, that's where I want to go be developed. Well, but they also the have offensive coordinators that are going to teach them they, they've also that are going never, to turn over every other year because they're going to get head coaching jobs. They also don't normally get five star quarterbacks. They're not Alabama doesn't like they they haven't they uh, so the five stars that they had had under Nick Saban before were um, uh, the kid that played that got beat out by AJ McCarron and I cannot remember his name like Philip something Philip Sims Philip whatever. Uh. Uh, so him and uh, Blake Barnett, and now Tua Tagovailoa. I just everybody else was a four star. I, I just don't understand the concept of playing behind somebody and hoping that I can beat them out. Yes, I want competition. Yes, I get it. But I want to compete against the other team. 
I want to go somewhere and I'm not saying you have to guarantee me a spot, but I would rather go somewhere where I can walk on and know I can start day one or I have a chance to start day one. Uh, you go you go be, play behind a true freshman that just led a team to an undefeated season or in, in Georgia's case, like a true freshman that just led their team to an SEC championship game and, and they hadn't done that in a long time. There like, are guys like, like why that out would, there. Why would like, you think that I'm just going to go there and walk on and take that job? Uh, for example, Rondell Moore, Purdue, same kind of guy. He went to Purdue because he felt like he could make an immediate impact. Yeah, he could play. Say, he could play today. Lavisca Chenault, Colorado. Yeah, same thing. He was five star dude from Texas. It's all that, about trying to play right now because exactly. you're not guaranteed Sundays. So play now, you're as not guaranteed much as, tomorrow for but, that much. But play as much as you can on Saturdays. It's the it's the the one thing I hate about what college football has done in recruiting is these guys just all the best players go to the exact same school and they don't care if they play at all they just hope that well I'll bide my time and then now you got the dude at at at, at Clemson well I sat behind this guy and I sat behind this guy and now I sat behind this guy and well I got passed yeah so now I got to transfer my last year like dude had you never gone there. You could have played yep. wherever. You could have played wherever you wanted to. So, just my two cents on that matter. You brought up Clemson. Let's go on and move into them. We're uh, we, we're going to run out of our time here, but uh, let's jump into Clemson. Clemson thir- or 41, NC State 7. Clemson only had 91 yards rushing. Like, they, they had been averaging over 280 yards. They only had 2.8 yards per carry yesterday. They had 380 passing yards behind Trevor Lawrence, the guy that we were just talking about, uh, to only 193 for Ryan Finley and, and NC State. The, the time of possession was pretty drastic in oh, Clemson's it was favor. Big, yeah, um, it, Clemson. This was the, one of those games where if they play this game ten other times, it doesn't turn out close to this. Clemson got out early. Clemson got out often, and then NC State just could not come back. Yeah, it, it was very, very simple game. Clemson. Do, this is the first game that Clemson played a real opponent where they dominated from start to finish. Yes, and it. I mean, trust me, it was the perfect weekend to do it. Yep, with Ohio State going out and and Notre Dame. Uh, on a bye. Bye week. Clemson jumped up to number two in both polls. So, let's move on. Michigan 21, Michigan State 7. Ooh. I think Harbaugh and them boys might have been angry. I I, I, I told you I thought something was different about this team as yeah. opposed to the teams in the past. Well, it's, it's why I had Michigan as, what, one of my outs, or did I have them in? I no, I had them remember. out. I had them out because I think I had, I think I had Ohio State I in, maybe? I had them in. I had them in. I think they're going to win this conference. I, I thought they were going to go eleven think, and one. I think they're the yeah. You had them lose to Ohio State. Yeah, I, I I think I think they're the best team in this conference. And I well, here's the deal with yesterday: three hundred ninety-five yards total offense for Michigan to ninety-four for Michigan State. Time of possession: Michigan had the ball over forty-one minutes. Michigan had one hundred and eighty-three rushing yards against the nation's number one rushing defense. Michigan State was 0 of 12 on third down. This was it, – it was supposed to be utter domination. Instead, it was a 7-7 game late in the third. And then I think Michigan just got tired of the crap. It's the perfect spot for Michigan State to win one of these games that, that they are not supposed to win, right? The you rain delay. Hey, the rain coming down. Then and you've it's got a delay, and, and it's nasty. Yeah. And that's the reason it was close. Yeah. And it – I mean, it – Michigan had two turnovers. They play like, this game in a dome. If for some reason these two teams played in like the, the you know the 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 Lucas Oil Stadium dome or whatever and it, whatever like like Michigan this isn't beat some this isn't close. Yeah, this isn't close. No, I I agree with you. One team is vastly superior than the other. Yes. Um, Michigan has a week off and then they play uh, Penn State, who will be coming off of a game against Iowa, which, who. Not uh, not and feeling com- good coming for off a nail biter in uh in Bloomington in Bloomington where like yeah. there was nine people there. That's we're we're not even going to well because it was ten degrees outside. Like I couldn't believe there was that many people there for that game. It it ended up being close because of uh we see what Penn State does every week. They just play the level of competition. LSU nineteen Mississippi State three. Pat or Pat Nick Fitzgerald. Yeah, holy, I, don't, I don't know who Pat Fitzgerald. Holy God. Okay, so in my weekly recap on the website today, I I did give LSU credit because, I mean, they did what they were supposed to do. Very opportunistic defense like we've been talking about all year. Uh, offense just gets enough to get the job done. I don't understand what Joe Moorhead is doing with Nick Fitzgerald. He was 8 of 24 for 59 yards and four interceptions. On the year against Power 5, competition 
Nick Fitzgerald is like 55 out of 127 or something like that. Um, Less than 50%. It's, it's like 43% completion percentage with only two touchdowns and seven interceptions. Now, granted, he had four of them last night. But if you know something ain't working, quit trying to put a square peg into a round hole. Like, quit doing it. There were so many instances last night where – if he had thrown the ball away, he would have had an even worse completion percentage, but he got sacked on multiple third down occasions. They were 2 of 14 on third down. They ran for over five yards of carry. There were holes opened up by that Mississippi State offensive line over and over and over, and it's just bad coaching. Like, And it wasn't just on offense. On defense, like the play that you talked about yeah. to me earlier, like get, yeah. go ahead they, and talk they about got, that. They got an, one, one, this is this is bad coaching. This is just bad coaching. They pick off Burrow in the end zone. the The guy who intercepts the ball literally he's he's probably about four yards into the end zone. Yeah, runs out of the end zone and then runs out of bounds at the one yard line. If you just kneel it, fall down, walk out of bounds in the end zone, you it's get on the, the twenty. 20. Yeah, instead. First, I go from immediate pissed off because my guy just threw an interception in the end zone, in the red zone, and then I just start laughing because I think at no point in time was I worried about this game, and and nor should I be because a team that makes decisions like that, that that is what that is why you're not going to get from the level that you are to a next level up. It's just because you you cannot beat yourself. You cannot do something great. And then immediately do something stupid yeah. to hurt your team. Yeah. I Good agree. teams don't do that. So, State had 5.4 yards per carry. Um, they had 260 total yards to LSU's 239. Do we want to talk about Devin White? Uh, I mean, you can talk about it if you want. I'm not. I don't, I don't have a whole lot to say other than I'm just thoroughly pissed off. I'm a little, like, I think we are both in agreement that this should be reviewable by the SEC after the fact because it was not targeting. It was not targeting. Like, this was – there were there were plays in the Alabama game that were more egregious than this one that there was no flag even thrown on. In the NFL, you can go back and find somebody even if there's no flag thrown on it. Like, why does it matter if the replay official saw it and said, uh, it's been confirmed, it was targeting? And it's at the end of the game, and the game does not matter. Yeah, the game is out of hand. Like it, and this is not just because, and it, it wasn't is, a dirty play. At no point in time yeah. was it a dirty play. He didn't go after Nick's head. It's not just because it is the Alabama game next for LSU. This is something that needs to be checked out because you're taking away an entire game for for one play for kids that you know may not get to play all that often. Like the, I, the well, NF- he gets to play a lot. The, NF- the NFL has the rule that's right. Now, now their rules are, are kind of messed up sometimes, but this rule is right. You get two. Yeah. You get two, and they call them two unsportsmanlike penalties. So if you get called for targeting, that's an unsportsmanlike penalty. If you do something offensive or taunt, that's an unsportsmanlike penalty. Or if it's a flagrant hit, yeah. then you get tossed for that. Like this one, there you can't tell by the video. You, it, it, the odds of this being like on purpose – I've watched this so over and over and over again. I don't know that he even makes contact with his helmet, much less forcible contact with his helmet. The fa- at worst, the face masks hit each other. Yeah, at at worst, and that's like not a, enough a, to make his head fly backwards because agreed, his hands hit in the chest. It's against the rule, like helmet to helmet contact. We that's get right. that. Yeah, but even still, like this was, and this is uh, not okay. Devin White is not just a player. Okay. This is the Alabama game, LSU game. This is a big game. And right. he's the best player. At, at on no that point LSU in time defense. is LSU really going to have a chance in this game. I get that. Alabama's making mince meat out of everyone. Yeah, I mean, let's but, not go crazy. But let's let's not pretend that taking one player off of, of a team won't help or hurt because Devin White is that good. He could easily be the first defensive player taken in this year's draft. I mean, let's let's say that uh, I think he's every bit as good as Roquan Smith, and you know, I I am documented on how much I think oh, Roquan yeah. Smith should have been the number one player in the in the draft taken. I think you're happy where he got taken. I'm fine with that, but <laughs> but 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 I'm I'm just telling you, I think he's fantastic. I think he's fantastic. He's a, he's a great player. Devin White is a 
is a legit game changer. He's a middle linebacker that he's the quarterback of our defense. If Tua Tungavailoa couldn't play in the first half of y'all's game as the quarterback of your offense, you would be screwed. Yes. Agreed. Like not just not just hurt, screwed. Because by the time he gets back in the second half, it won't matter. I mean, it it might not matter, but... I, I eh. think it won't. I'm going into this with expectations of I don't know that this is going to matter. Let's uh, let's move on from that because, man, we are running super long today. Uh, we'll, we'll try and fly through these. Uh, UCF needed a little bit of help yesterday. They did not get it. Cincinnati falls to Temple 24-17. This was probably the best game of the day. This was a great game. Uh, Temple jumped out to a 10 to nothing lead in less than six minutes of game time. Um, since he then ran off 17 points to take a 17-10 lead until Temple scored with 49 seconds left in the game. And then Temple scores first in overtime, and then they pick off a pass. They win 24-17. to Look, because we talk about Central Florida a lot on this, UCF – needs as many high profile games as possible it does not matter what temple does from this point on like that is not going to be a high profile game for ucf they still have two losses and that's what everybody in the country well, three. is going to say well yeah. three, oh, that's right they do yeah. have three um so everybody will look at that and say ah they're not that good they lost to villanova they lost to you know yeah. buffalo whatever uh, although those are good teams it is what it is uh, and Temple was not the same team. I was about to say, that, that this is not the same Temple team. Uh, but they needed – UCF needed Cincinnati to be undefeated when they meet here in a few weeks, and that ain't going to help nothing. Uh, Oklahoma 52, TCU 27. This was a game at halftime. 28-24 at the bit. half. Uh, TCU had a quarterback change to Michael Collins. He looked a lot better. Correct. A whole lot better than Robinson. Um, but at the end of the day, total yardage was 536 for Oklahoma to 275 for TCU. It's a bad TCU team this year. No, this TCU is just not good. Just not good this year. Iowa 23, Maryland nothing, 310 yards to only 115 total yards for the Maryland Terrapins. 22 first downs for Iowa to 7. Time of possession was basically 41 minutes to 19. Look, Iowa looks dominant on defense. But here's what they got the uh, the next two weeks. At Penn State, at Purdue. So we'll, we'll see how good this Iowa team is. I love them because they are a covering machine, but I mean we'll see. They're six point underdogs at Penn State next week. I, I still might roll with them. We'll see. Utah forty one, USC twenty. Have you been paying attention to Utah? Yeah, they they're putting up a lot of points. Tyler Hundley is they like, are they're, I'm not used to Utah being this offensive juggernaut. No, I mean they're averaging over five hundred yards the last three. I'm games. used to Utah being the ugly beat them up. You know, yeah, and that's you what they were at the beginning you, yeah, of the season. You don't want to come into Utah and and and, and get beat. No, forty-one uh, twenty-eight over USC. Utah had five hundred and forty-one yards of total offense. USC only had two hundred and five total yards. That's sad. Now that's what the defense is supposed to do. This offense is just—I don't know what Kyle so, Whittingham is doing. Hey, check check out this stat. Okay, USC against Power Five competition. Averaging 2.69 yards per carry rushing this year. Yeah, that's not good. They can't run the football on so, anybody. So, question. Clay Helton, gone. Not yet. T. Martin, gone. Possibly. O.C.'s got to change if you're not going to change the head coach, right? You can't have two yards of a carry against every time you don't play an, an FCS school. If you look at their schedule, they could still go 8-4. and four. That's... That's because they play a bunch of bad teams, though, man. I know, but I, I really And don't one of those wins is complete shenanigans, and we agree with that. Yes, I, I do agree with okay. that. Okay. Um, UAB 29, North Texas 21. I just wanted to toss this out there because we both love UAB. Because I love Bill Clark. Uh, I worship at the feet of that man. UAB, look, they got handled like 47 to 24 by Coastal Carolina early in the year. Scared me off. They are 6 and 1 now. Their point differential this year. 234 to 106. They're 4 0 in Conference USA. I love that man. You think this team could be a uh, New Year's 16? No, but I love that man. <laughs> I do. I do love him. I love All him right. so much. Let's uh, let's close out with this. Uh, Auburn saved Malzahn. Uh, 31 16 over Ole Miss, whatever. Bama 58 to 21 over Tennessee. Most points scored by either team in the entire 102 year series. Like, that's crazy. Uh, and finally, Old Dominion. The most exciting two-win team in the entire country. They beat Western Kentucky. Here's how this finished up. Did you see this? I didn't watch any of this. This is how this finished up. I don't even know where you would find this. Old Dominion. So, well, one, 
so I'm flipping around. I actually, I got, I got to see it on the ESPN app. Like it was, it's insane because I thought I was seeing like, I thought I was going to see a game winning field goal, and then I got to watch this happen as it, as it played out. So Old Dominion, with two seconds left, was called for rush, uh, roughing the passer. Western Kentucky missed a 57 yard field goal. Old Dominion was called for 12 men on the field. Western Kentucky missed a 52 yard field goal. That was returned to the Western Kentucky 17. Western Kentucky was called for a face mask. This happened with no time left on the clock, right? Western Kentucky gets called for a face mask. Old Dominion hits the game-winning field goal. So there was a game between Alabama and Tennessee back in 1990 where it, it it's a 6-6 six to six game. And there's like seven seconds left in the game. Tennessee's ranked number three. Alabama's unranked. It's Gene Stallings' first year. It's like a 50-something yard field goal. And there's seven seconds left, so not all of it run, not I forget what it is. It's like it's it's crazy no time left, right? They try a field goal and they miss the field goal. And Alabama runs a play. And then they line up for field goal. It was two field goals in three plays. And Alabama hits like a fifty five yard field goal to win the game. Like, it went, it went at 9-6. to six. It's just ridiculous. Same thing here. You're trying a 52-yard field goal with no time left on the clock. Like, I mean, it was pick six, not pick six, kick, kick six, six-esque. Like, it's just crazy. You've never never seen anything like it. All right, you got any other notes for, uh, for this week? No, I don't think that's about it. That's about it? Everything else pissed me off. <laughs> that's beginning to be like a weekly thing, isn't it? Wasn't a good week. You don't have to worry about your Tigers this weekend. No, I get to take the week off. Thank goodness. All right. We will see you guys later on this week with our picks.